Now in this video we're thinking about recess factor incompatibility leading to hemolytic disease of the newborn and this is a complication whenever or a potential complication whenever we have a recess negative mother and a recess positive father and the recess factor that we're considering as the most antigenic is factor D. So when we're talking about the recess factor we're really talking about the D recess factor. Now when we think about red cells as you know, the ABO blood grouping system is on the surface of the cell. And with the ABO groupings, there are naturally occurring antibodies in the plasma, immunoglobulins. But the recess factor, which is present on the surface of the red cell, which we can just represent as a kind of oblong, this protein is present or absent. So this is present, so we've turned that into a recess positive cell but there are no naturally occurring antibodies to the recess factor in the plasma. But if recess positive blood is mistakenly given to someone who is recess negative via a blood transfusion or from a fetus, and we give that to someone who has got recess negative blood, they have no recess factor, now, before they had no recess factor antibodies in their plasma. But now, if they're exposed to the recess factor antigen, they will produce recess factor immunoglobulin type Gs. They will produce IgG antibodies. And these are going to be Y-shaped molecules like this with a specific receptor for the recess factor present in the end of the immunoglobulin. So these recess factor antibodies, the IgGs in this case, will only be produced by a recipient who is recess negative, who is exposed to recess positive blood. That is the essence of the physiology. Now let's think about the situation where there's a recess positive father and a recess negative mother. That means there is a 50% chance or 100% chance of the fetus being recess positive depending on the genotype of the father. So whenever there's a recess negative mother, if there's a recess positive father, this is a potential complication that we can develop this hemolytic disease of the newborn. Now, what is it that's going on here? Well, let's consider um, this is where baby is. The fetus is going to be in the uterus here. This is going to be mum. There's mum there. Not a very good person. The head would be up there somewhere. So here we have the uterus and the fetus is going to be here in the uterus. So what we have here is we have a rhesus negative mother who is now carrying a rhesus positive fetus courtesy of the dominant rhesus gene supplied by the father. Now the risk is that we get feto maternal hemorrhage blood leaking from the fetus into the mother's maternal circulation. Now, this doesn't usually happen in the first part of pregnancy, but it can happen towards the end of pregnancy. But during delivery, it's guaranteed that some of the fetal blood via the torn placenta is going to get into the mother. So in a first pregnancy with a recess negative mother, in this case, the mother will not have any recess factor antibodies as long as she hasn't been exposed to recess positive blood any time in the past. But now she carries the recess positive fetus and some of the recess positive fetuses, red cells, will get into the maternal circulation. Some of the baby's red cells through this fetal maternal hemorrhage will get in. And of course the 
baby's red cells are recess positive. And this will certainly happen during delivery if it hasn't already happened in the later stages of pregnancy. Now, what this will mean is that the mother will make these recess factor antibodies. In other words, the mother will become sensitized to the recess factor. She will make recess factor antibodies which previously she did not have. The mother will become sensitized. Now, this baby is going to be born and during the first pregnancy, there's not usually any problem because most of the sensitization is likely to take place during the birth of the child. So by the time the mother develops the recess factor antibodies after the delivery, it's okay because the recess positive baby has already been delivered. But what this means is that the mother is now sensitized to the recess factor. She now has recess factor antibodies because of the fetomaternal hemorrhage. The baby's red cells getting into the mother's circulation. But that baby's gone now, they're born, that's absolutely fine. But the mother can become pregnant a second time. And again, it's likely with the recess positive father that a rec another recess positive infant is going to result, another recess positive fetus. So here we have the uterus a second time. Here's mum. Here's the fetus in here, now inside the mother. So now we have the second child. So here we have the second child. And this child again is recess positive, courtesy of the father's genetics. But now the mother has these recess factor antibodies in her circulation. These Y-shaped IgG antibodies. And of course she has untold millions of them, if you draw them at a smaller scale. Now the problem is that transplacental migration of antibodies does occur, and in fact it's essential that it does occur, because when the baby is born we want the baby to have passive immunity as a result of the mother's antibodies to all the bacterial and viral diseases that are about. But the downside when we have the recess factor antibodies is that the recess factor antibodies can migrate into the baby's circulation. And what will happen here is that these recess factor antibodies will start to agglutinate and hemolyze the fetal red cells. So the baby will develop hemolysis. Now, what does this mean? Well, the baby's going to develop hemolysis and that's going to make the baby or the fetus anemic. So that's going to reduce the oxygen delivery to all parts of the baby's body. As well as that, because there is a reduced oxygen carrying capacity of the blood, the fetal heart will try and compensate for that. And that can lead to fetal cardiac failure. As well as that, when the red cells are broken down, when the haemoglobin in red cells is broken down, what is going to be produced? Well, bilirubin is going to be produced as a haemoglobin breakdown product. But now we have all of this hemolysis in the fetus, we're going to get lots of bilirubin released. And the bilirubin is particularly toxic for neurological tissue. So it's going to damage brain development. And this is conicterus or bilirubin encephalopathy. So the brain of the fetus won't develop properly because of the deposition of bilirubin in bilirubin encephalopathy. 
And as well as that, in the fetus, the red blood cells are produced in the liver and the spleen. So we're going to get enlargement of the liver and spleen as they try to produce more red blood cells. So the fetus is going to develop a splenomegaly and a hepatomegaly. And as the hepatomegaly develops, the liver gets bigger, the liver function is going to be reduced. So the fetus is going to have reduced liver function. And the albumin is made in the liver. And the albumin is responsible for generating the oncotic pressure in the blood. And it's this oncotic pressure that generates the osmolarity in the blood, which is going to suck in the tissue fluids back into the intravascular compartment. So because the baby is going to be hypoalbuminemic, because they're not producing the albumin, the baby can also be edematous. So what we can end up with is a delivery of an edematous anemic baby with bilirubin encephalopathy with brain damage. And of course, the child's going to be jaundiced because of the, the bilirubin as well. In more severe cases, there can be interuterine death and, and the child will die. Now, if this is recognised in modern units, some units will perform a interuterine blood transfusion, which of course is a very technical procedure. Other times the baby will receive blood transfusions after birth. But it's rather hard to undo any damage caused by the bilirubin encephalopathy. So what we need to do is prevent this condition from happening. Now in the first pregnancy, we've said that some recess factor antigens are going to get into the maternal circulation. Now, if there was lots of antibodies there already that we put in, if we gave the mother an injection of anti-D immune globulin, then as soon as the fetal cells came in from the baby, they would be mopped up by these antibodies that we've injected. So that's exactly what we do. Now, a lot of units will give an injection of anti-D at about 28 weeks in pregnancy. Um, but the, the critical point is to give an injection of the anti-D antibodies. It's a form of passive immunisation of the mother, really, to give that immediately after birth or as soon after birth as we can, or certainly within the first 24 hours. And then that means that any of the fetal red cells that of course are rhesus positive, that have got into the mother, will be quickly agglutinated and hemolyzed by these antibodies that we have given. But because this is a passive immunization, within a few months, the mother will have got rid of all of these antibodies. And the key thing is she will not have produced her own. So by giving the anti-D, we're giving these anti-recess or anti-D immunoglobulins. That's mopping up, a bit like a sponge, all of the fetal red cells, getting rid of them very quickly, probably within hours, it'll collect all of these fetal red cells and break them down. And that means that the time that the mother is exposed to the recess factor antigen is very short, and she will not have time to produce her own antibodies. That means for a second pregnancy, the mother will not have been sensitized. The mother will not have the recess factor antibodies. Therefore, they will not be able to migrate into the fetus. Therefore, the fetus will not develop hemolytic disease of the newborn. So an absolutely classic example of where prevention is better than cure. So suspect this possibility whenever we have a recess positive father and a recess negative mother and give the anti-D according to your local protocols, probably at 28 weeks of pregnancy, but certainly in, in the first 24 hours after delivery. And that means you are potentially saving the life of any subsequent fetuses. And I'm sure they will be very grateful.